Okay, so I saw this intriguing problem, and I thought I'd share it with you all because I thought it was kind of cute. So the problem asks to determine all real values of x and y that satisfy this set of equations. So you notice uh, throughout there's an x variable, uh, and then there's these powers of cosine and sine being multiplied by each other. So I'm going to call this first equation 1 and the second equation 2. And I'm going to give you some time to actually play with this. Uh, so as a suggestion, think about ways that you can manipulate 1 and 2, uh, maybe adding or subtracting, to get some extra information. Okay, so now the question is what to do. The thing that's interesting about this is if you add these two numbers, you get 27. And if you subtract them, you get 1. So it seems like something suspicious is happening. And then here you have this cascading situation of a bunch of cubes and squares, etc., um, propagating throughout. So if you were to add these two equations, there's a common factor of x. And then you're left with cosine cubed y uh, plus 3 cosine y sine squared y. Uh, and then from the second equation, you get a sine cubed y uh, plus 3 cosine squared y sine y. And you end up with the fact that this is actually equal to uh, the sum of these two things, which is 27. Now, 27 rings a bell of being a perfect cube. So if there's a perfect cube in here somehow, that would be nice. And you can actually see it, but it's a bit hidden. So you have a cosine cubed y, and then a 3 cosine squared y sine y, and a 3 cosine y sine y squared, and then a sine y cubed. So if you group that together, you can actually write that as the expansion of cosine y plus sine of y all cubed, and that equals 27. Now, the unfortunate part about this is that if you take the cube root of this, it's a little bit annoying because of this x value, but let's at least keep this and then analyze what happens when we subtract these two and then see if we can do anything with the result. Now, we got this equation by adding 1 and 2, if we subtract 1 and 2, we would get a negative contribution to the sine cubed and a negative of cosine squared sine y. So instead of having a cosine y plus sine y all cubed, we'd have a cosine y minus sine y all cubed. In fact, we can test this out, and this will equal 1. If you wanted to do some work on the side, we could think about the quantity a minus b cubed and ask what that is. It'll be a cubed minus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared minus b cubed. And you can get that by expanding twice or thinking about something called the binomial theorem. Okay, so now the question is what do we do with these two equations that we have left? Well, the variable x is causing some kind of disturbance, um, but we can eliminate it by dividing these two quantities. Now, if we divide, we'll still have these expressions in cosine y and sine y, but there's actually something really nice that you can take advantage of. So if you look at cosine y plus sine y as an expression, uh, you can actually rewrite it in terms of one trigonometric function. Now the way to do this, and there's sort of several ways to do this, is you could think about universally multiplying this quantity by the same amount. So we could multiply, for example, by the sine of pi over 4, or the cosine of pi over 4. Those two values are both 1 over root 2. So if we did that, we would get something like, we could represent this as cosine pi over 4 and a sine pi over 4 here. These are both 1 over root 2. And so this would be equal to root 2 or 1 over root 2 times the quantity cosine y plus sine y. 
Okay, however, at the same time, by the angle sum formula for sine, this quantity right over here is the sine of y plus pi over 4. So if we brought this root 2 over to the other side, we would get that cosine y plus sine y is actually root 2 times the sine of y plus pi over 4. Okay, uh, so doing this, we could actually do the same thing for cosine, y minus sine y, and um, there we can actually represent this in terms of a cosine. So I'll erase everything here, and we'll see how this plays out. So if we're to do the same thing with cosine y minus sine y, you can actually uniformly multiply by a cosine on each and represent this as root 2 cosine of y plus pi over 4. Okay, so now doing that, if we label this equation that we got from the original equation, or these two as 3 and 4, if we now divide these, we'd eliminate the x's, and we get this quantity cubed divided by this quantity cubed. Okay, but this quantity divided by this quantity is actually an explicit trigonometric function, is tangent. So we would end up with the statement that tangent cubed of y plus pi over 4 equals 27. Okay, that's actually fantastic because now we can take cube roots and solve for y and subsequently solve for x. So what I'd love to do is not complete this proof or the uh, process of finding solutions, but ask you how you'd go about actually completing this process. Leave your thoughts in the comments and open discussion about possibly generalizing this process to different equations of the same type. Could you think of a way of having a more complicated set of equations like this that lead to a solution using the same type of process? Leave your thoughts and I hope to hear from you.